This is the Getting Started with Depot Systems 5 training video. In this video we will review the basic system startup of getting a terminal depot location ready and accounts for ready for data entry. After login you will see the main menu of the system and you will see the menu also contains submenus that can be used later uh, for user setup you can change the security levels so that users can only see certain menu groups if needed. To set up your terminals first we want to go to utilities, depots terminals, and you will see a starting terminal which may be a Cleveland location or one that you created in the initial setup. If you need to change this location code you can click the change location button put in your terminal's city code or name that you would like to give it and this name will be referenced throughout the system as you're looking at equipment. Click the change button, click exit to save it. You can then change your location code, uh, name, and contact information as needed for your depot. Please leave the customer number and serial number as is. These will be changed later by depot system support after you purchase this system or uh, as we do your basic uh, setup. The other tabs can be filled in at a later time. If you have more than one location you can purchase more locations and each one is a licensed serial number and you can have as many locations in the system as you need. Next we will go to the user screen in the user screen you can create users for your company you can have as many users as you'd like and you click the add new user button at the bottom here to create the user give them a user ID and password and set a security level for the user a 100 is an administrator they can access creating users in all parts of the system if this person will not be an administrator, we recommend sending them to a 90 or an 80 so to prevent access to all parts of the system. Each user must be connected to one or more depots. So after creating your user, click the locations here, pick your depot or the depots that they will have access to, click the add button. This user has access to both Columbus and Cleveland locations. This can be changed at any time. There's more security settings that can be set in the other screens and you can control the allowed menus that they access from the screen here. Click Save to save your user. Next we will set up accounts that your depot terminal operation will use. Each account in the system is normally a steamship line or chassis pool. You can also have accounts that are your own equipment or chassis, containers, anything you'd like. You can have as many accounts as you want um, per depot location. So you can click the add new account at the bottom here, create an account code, name, and pick a location that that account will tie to. Each account can only be tied to one location. If you need to have um, a steamship line or chassis pool that's tied to multiple locations, you would create the account for one city, like this one is Hatback Lloyd for Cleveland. Then you would create another one. This one is Hatback Lloyd for Columbus. And each one you pick a different terminal code for. We recommend putting in a two letter city code at the front if you're going to have more than one depot. In this example, we use CL for Cleveland and CO for Columbus makes it easier later to see which accounts are tied to, to which city just by the account code. For each account in the system there are many settings that can be set. The majority of these do not need to be touched for your initial startup. The only common one that people normally go to is email and they put in email addresses uh, for their customers so that they don't have to type them in each time they want to send a report. The other settings in the system will normally be set up for you by Depot System Support and um, we will assist you as needed. The other thing that can be done is for storage accounts. You can go to storage rates. In here you can set up rates. Each account can have a, for each size and type, you can have a setup rate, container only rate, chassis rate, and loaded rate. 
these can be filled at any time later in the system you do not need these filled up to start the system or test um, just before you do your first storage invoicing we would need to fill these in other rates can be created for custom size and types as needed so once you've created your basic customers click save and then we're ready for data input before we get into anything on the data input of the gates for your system under utilities there are some other menus that can be used later edit trucker codes these would be the truckers that come in and out of your system you can add them as needed we assign a code to each one and you can have as many as you want in here we give a starting list if you don't like this this can be changed or deleted in the system too each trucker can have email address blocked accounts and other controls that can be done per trucker you can create size and type codes as many size and type codes as you need they are created in the system here ones that you do not eat need can also be deleted in the system you can also create repair codes these are two letter codes that are used to describe the container status or chassis status you can have as many codes in the system as you like we just recommend that you keep the AV code as available as that is the system standard for using the system go to the home tab from here you can do your gate ins gate outs equipment status management other gate activities if you go to the gate tab these are the same screens same choices this is just a smaller menu that can be used for as, as a security option for other users there's no difference between the gate in here or the gate in in the main tab if you click the gate in screen the screen will open this is where you can begin entering your data and we will continue the use of the gate system in the next video, which is uh, using the gate system in Depo System 5. Thank you.